Hey everyone, it's Ben with Type Me, and I want to introduce you to my doggo. His name is Patches. Patches is a three-year-old Cavapoo, and because of some symptoms he's recently had, we've been a little concerned about our little boy. And for that reason, we've decided to test his blood glucose to make sure that he isn't diabetic. And I will admit right now, only one out of the three ways that we tried to test him worked. The other two, pretty rough. Today, we're talking about diabetes or furabetes. That's diabetes in dogs and cats. During this video, I will cover signs and symptoms specific to both types of pets, as well as testing and treatment options. Patches, are you ready? Before we get into it, and if you'd like to stay up to date on what's going on in the diabetes world, consider joining our family and subscribing to our content. Number one, dog diabetes. Yes, dogs are capable of having type 1 and type 2 diabetes. Now, genetics can play a role in your fur baby getting this disease. For an example, some breeds of dogs like uh, Samoids, Miniature and Toy Poodles, Pugs, Bichons, Doxies, Siberian Huskies, and even some Terrier breeds are more likely to have diabetes. For pet diabetes detection, you may notice signs and symptoms like reoccurring infections poor coat quality, cataracts, and even seizures. In the later stages of detection, you may also notice that your furry friends, both cats and dogs, will experience vomiting, weight loss, and decreased appetite. In order to test for petabetes, you can actually use a standard glucometer. Testing sites can be found on the paw, the inner ear, and even the inner lip. I thought that was a good idea. A healthy dog can have a glucose level ranging from 75 milligrams per deciliter to 120 milligrams per deciliter, or 4.16 to 6.7 millimole per liter. Now for a complete video tutorial on this procedure, check out the AAHA link in the show notes. Okay, kitty cat time. Cats are also capable of having type 1 and type 2 diabetes. However, Cats are fortunate because unlike dogs, with good home care and dietary management, cats are more likely to reverse type 2 diabetes. But unfortunately with dogs, remission seldom occurs. Now veterinarians have noted that indoor middle-aged cats are most likely to develop type 2 diabetes. Like humans, this is usually linked to the sedentary lifestyle coupled with a poor diet. Not saying your cats eat cheeseburgers, but... Now just like humans, cats may experience polydipsia, polyphagia, and polyuria. That is excessive thirst, excessive hunger, and frequent urination. Now with cats, if they're suffering from polyuria, uh, many of the owners have noted that they will see the cat urinating just outside of the litter box instead of in the litter box where they normally go. To test cats for diabetes, you can also prick the paw pad, you do the inner ear, but don't try the inner lip. Now, a healthy cat has a glucose level ranging of 80 milligrams per deciliter to 120 milligrams per deciliter, not too different from the dog. That's 4.44 to 6.7 millimole per liter. Okay, treatment. A healthier diet and weight loss plan should be the priority in a newly diagnosed pet with diabetes. The dietary therapy is a key component. Now, your veterinary team will create a plan that will optimize body weight with appropriate protein and carbohydrate levels, fat restrictions, and calorie control. Obese cats and dogs will need to lose at least 1-2% to of their weight each week initially to help insulin work more effectively. Now, if their sugar stays high and their symptoms persist, a one to twice daily insulin injection may be required to treat your fur baby and their sugar issues. Remember, speak to your veterinarian before making any medical decisions. It's also important to note that if insulin injections are required for your fur abetic, you will need to find a prescription specific to animals. The human stuff isn't the same. This is because pet insulin is engineered with modifications to allow it to bind to animal anatomy with a higher affinity while allowing for prolonged insulin absorption. There's even a 2021 article in today's veterinary practice that suggests no commercially available CGMs have been approved 
for veterinary use. However, some veterinary distributions may carry these devices for sale in veterinary clinics. A prescription is required for an owner to obtain one from a human pharmacy. Now, as you can see, people are using them on all kinds of pets without prescriptions with success. All right, are you ready to see how Patch's testing went? Can you guess which pricking location is gonna work best? Will it be the ear, the paw, or the inner lip? Well, let's take a look. Initially, I felt like I was gonna put him in less pain if I did the inner ear. I couldn't get a drop of blood out of there. And so I went to the paw. The problem with the paw was, is it was so absorbent, even after I had cleaned it with alcohol, that I couldn't get a real drop from it and I kept getting errors on the glucose monitor. Eventually and reluctantly, I had to go to the inner lip. And he was such a good boy about it. And thank God he's not diabetic. Suggestions. Yes, I have a suggestion. If you have a pet that you think may be diabetic, go ahead and grab a glucometer and prick away. Testing your pet may extend the amount of time that you get to hug your furry friend. And who doesn't want that? Join me next week when we talk about pets that can detect hyperglycemia.